Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Hello YouTube and welcome. For this video, I want to show you how to detect fileless attacks using Azure Sentinel. So grab your coffee or your whiskey. Because you already know how juicy it's going to get. Okay, so I'm logged into my test VM and I've decided to check my emails. Oh look, I've got an attachment. I downloaded it to my desktop. So in the attachment here, 210 kilobytes. Merry Christmas, it says. So let me extract this to desktop as if you would. And we have a .exe Merry Christmas here. Let's just open this. Ah, oh, okay. Doesn't that look sweet? We have a nice uh, flickering Christmas tree on your desktop. I mean, what better way to, to spread the Christmas cheer, right? Wrong. So this is definitely the I don't want to see running on my desktop. Okay, so if we close this down, close that, we get rid of all the evidence. Put it in there. Oh, we can't delete it. Why is that then? Okay. It's actually because it spawned a process in the background. Okay, so what we can do is if we go back in to the Merry Xmas and we right click and we go open with. Okay, so there's something going on here. So this is actually a Microsoft HTML application host or is it .hta as it's referred to. So this has actually been embedded with a picture, which I then encoded in base 64, the Christmas tree GIF, which you just saw a minute ago. Although you can't actually see the HTA, I've actually uh, not got file extensions shown. So it just looks like a, a, a .exe. Um, so, you know, we can see, you know, there's, there's, there's some bits and pieces going on here. Um, if we scroll down to the bottom, I mean, this, this payload is huge what we want is payload so here we've got function hta uh, var and then payload equals powershell now right here is the encoded powershell string so i'm just going to grab all of this up until here i'm going to right click and click copy so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to open up um a online decoder uh, and then we're going to paste this in there and we can actually see what it looks like okay so now this is loaded up i'm just going to paste the encoded script into here and just click decode okay what a load of what a load of jargon okay so if i copy this and i'm going to flick over to visual studio code even i'm just going to paste this in here uh, and all these random characters here so this one i'm just going to right click i'm going to go change all occurrences i'm just going to hit delete and what that's going to do is it's going to it's going to get rid of all the wild crazy characters that we just saw um so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make this look a bit more readable just by adding some bits down here and it's all on one screen i know there's someone right now sat there saying you can just use word wrap but you know i'm doing this now okay so we've got our script here um i'm not going to run you through all of the code which is presented here because there's obviously a lot going on um so what we're looking for is uh system management automation util which is here i'm actually looking for system auto management uh amsi okay so amsi stands for anti-malware scan interface so this is actually baked into windows and is designed to allow for the most common malware scanning and uh, protection techniques it also supports uh, calling structures to allow for file and memory scanning as well as stream scanning but due to the obfuscated code which is presented uh, to the script actually makes it extremely difficult for antivirus to pick up uh, pick this up as malicious hence the multiple encoded strings here um i won't go any further into uh, amsi but i'll pop some links in the uh, description and you can go and have a butcher's uh, at those um okay so you know there's there's a lot going on here uh, you can still see the obfuscation going on with the uppercase and lowercase um, but we also noticed there's another 
uh, decoded um, uh, encoded string here so what we're going to do is we're going to flick back over to this one here and we're just going to paste this in here and we're going to decode that and again we're going to go over to our visual studio code and we're going to paste this in and we're going to get rid of this now if you can see already you can probably see what's going to happen here we're going to delete this and yeah it's giving us a listener so this uh, is actually the http address of a command and control server which is running on my kali linux box um so if you flick over to my kali linux virtual machine we can now do some post exploitation techniques all right all right all right okay so uh for my post exploitation techniques i'll be using kali linux armed with the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world PowerShell Empire! Okay, so let's have a look at our agents here. Um, so we can see right away um, we've got an agent that's been connected. So um, let's do some stuff. So if we go agents, okay, we'll go interact. W. Okay, so who am I? Run this quick task. Sentinel Park, excellent. Okay, so let's do a sysinfo. Let's see the build. Oh, it's beautiful. Internal IP address, the host name, data center, excellent. Okay, so now we're going to get proper juicy. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to run a custom keylogger script which I've created. So we're going to go script import. And then it's under the root, and then I think it's desktop, and then we're going to go key logger.ps1. Uh, let me just see. No, nope, that's not under there. Uh, it's actually in. Okay, so let me just get rid of this. Bring this down so I can actually see it. Crap. Uh, it's in home calu documents empire and then it is keylogger.ps1 okay fine so we've now imported the uh, keylogger this has been saved into memory so what we're going to do is we're going to um, run this command so script uh, cmd and then keylogger.ps1 okay so let's flick back over to my uh victim machine and um you know maybe they uh they want to go to halifax banking so let's just go to halifax uh halifax banking yep yeah. okay so let's sign in uh we're going to call this i am a hacker and then a password is going to be that. And we click continue. Obviously, it doesn't allow it. But let's just pretend it is. Let's just pretend I've logged in and it's all successful. Now I'm going to go over to the um, Facebook. And we're going to do the same thing. No, do not store a password for that site. Okay, obviously got an unsupported browser here. Um, I am a hacker at gmail.com, whatever, uh, password here. Yeah, log in. Okay, cool. So also let's pretend that that's worked as well. So now we're going to do something really sexy. What we're going to do is I'm going to flick back over to my Kali Linux VM. Uh, and we can actually see that the CMD key credentials have been added successfully. Excellent. Um, now the next part of this script is... How we're going to capture that data, uh, sorry, how we're going to um, get the data that's been captured using our uh, script logger. So what we're going to try and do to mask our identity, I'm going to plumb the uh, all the keystrokes which were deployed, <clears throat> which were created as part of the script, and I'm going to deploy them to a blob storage. So basically we're going to run a uh, another PowerShell script, which will, as you can tell, uh, upload the keylogger.txt to a Azure blob storage. So here again, we're going to go script import, and we're going to go home, 
and it's Calu again, and it's Documents, and it's Empire, and it's Upload. Bang. Okay, we're going to go Script, and we're going to go CMD, and it's Upload Key Logger.ps1. Okay, so now let's uh, flick over to the Azure portal. Um, and what we can do is we can download this keylogger here. So we've got a uh, test dummy uh, storage account here, container keylogs, and a keylogger.txt. Open this up here and bring this on screen. So we can see here I went to uh, Halifax Online, and that was my login. That was my password. Then I went to Facebook, that was my login, and that was my password. So, you know, pretty scary stuff, right? So now I know what you're thinking if the user just shuts down the computer, you know they're all good, so disconnect the session back to the command and control server. Well, I actually embedded another script inside the original keylogger script, which created a, uh, a scheduled task for this uh, Merry Christmas application to be run. So if I flick back over to the uh, victim's virtual machine, now, if we go to task scheduler, we can see here that we've got a, uh, a run script task here. So if we open this up and we go to triggers, it will log on at any time. And the action is, oh, hang on a second. I thought we deleted the actual um, application. Well, it's actually copied itself to a, another location, which is basically a hidden directory, the default app data and that. That is going to run again. So again, this is this is pretty scary stuff. It's basically self-replicated. So yeah, I could have actually uh, gone a step further here and created uh, another part of the script inside the code, which which renamed the Merry Xmas, Merry Christmas. I don't know why I'm saying Xmas. I'm reading it as it says. Um, which could rename it to I don't know Hello Dot World um, Dot Exe. Um, so if the user actually did, did a cleanse and searched for that specific application, they wouldn't actually find it because it's been renamed. Um, but you kind of get the gist here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to the Azure portal. Uh, we're going to go to the Sentinel dashboard and we're going to start working on our detection analysis query. Okay, so now we're in the portal. Uh, firstly, um, we're going to search for... Uh, event 4688, which is a new process creation. We'll add a few command line entities in there. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go security ops event. Uh, we're going to go where an event ID. And then equals equals 4688. And then we're going to go pipe again where command line. And then we're going to have contains. And then here we're going to have dash NOP, which means no profile. And then we're going to go or. And then we're going to have the same command line and then contains. And then dash ENC, which stands for encoded. Now it's 30 minutes. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so we have various. Uh, you can see here the command line is ran. Uh, and it's got the obfuscated code here. <clears throat> okay, so that's fine. So we've got some results. Um, malware has launched CMD, uh, and then it's launched the PowerShell to create our reverse connection using the uh, encoded string here. Um, so let's use the same query, but what we're going to do is add a where, and then we're going to go command, whoops, command line, and then does not contain the notepad because you actually opened it up with notepad right um so that's fine so that's give us the same results okay that's good that's good um so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna mold two parts of the query together here so if i go up to the top and i'm gonna go bracket uh union and then is fuzzy and then equals true let me just navigate down i can't find this finger uh, and then we're going to, oops, yeah, it's true. And then we're going to have security event. Uh, and then we're going to go bracket here, comma. And then we're going to create another bracket. And we're going to go security event down here as well. Uh, and then we're going to have pipe where. 
event ID and then equals equals four six eight eight where command line nope command line contains let's do does not contain actually and then we'll put no pad in this one let's just get rid of the top one contains a notepad and then we're gonna have a where I cannot type at all contains and we're gonna have dot hta okay so we're gonna go bracket here and a bracket there and then run okay now we're getting somewhere so we can see here the bottom one is actually giving us the process so we can see right here that on our test uh, virtual machine the victim actually showed the merry christmas.exe but it's actually a hta application so obviously this is what we've found searching here the hta application so that's great um so now what we're going to do is we're going to join another uh another data set here um which is going to be for to see the actual code that was executed um so here we're going to go bring that out and we're going to go event and we're going to go where then id and then equals equals and then eight no 800 and then where event data contains and so i'm just going to paste this in here for uh for efficiency i'm going to copy this and paste it again and then change the next line to amsi and then I'm going to finish with a bracket and then a bracket and then. Okay. So we've definitely got some data now. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, so if we go across and let's find one of these. Uh, okay, right, here we go. If you remember in the original script that we found, this has now been decoded uh, using the event ID 800 here. So this has now actually been plumbed into Sentinel. So this is including, uh, so we're actually including the data properties from the utils and um, anti-malware uh, scan interface. So this is great. We can see everything here that we want to see. Um, including the new process which is created, we can actually identify what is exactly going down uh, on this virtual machine. We've got the deobfuscated code, which is being plumbed into Sentinel. But now, if you remember, uh, we actually ran our keylogger script as well. But because this script was launched in memory, there's actually no log of this. Uh, so there's no temporary files either. So there's zero IO system calls, which are made. This is because remote imports, uh, allow arbitrary code to be dynamically loaded into memory. And then they are directly imported into the current running processes. So this is why you cannot see a log of these commands being run, but using this query will help you identify fileless attacks using PowerShell relatively quickly thanks for watching the video if you like the video please give it a thumbs up if you don't well that's just fine please subscribe tell your friends tell your family tell your nan cheers